Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorazzle Dazzle Physics. In this video, guys, I'm going to be walking you through the concept of stellar parallax. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So first thing we're going to do is the following. Let's take out our thumb and hold it up in front of us. Okay, right in front of us. Yes, in between the eyes. Right, now from here, you're going to close one eye and just look at the position of your thumb. And you're going to switch eye. Yeah? Okay, what do you notice? So keep doing it. Back and forth, back and forth. What do you notice? Well, hopefully you can notice that your thumb appears to move, yes, relative to the background. This is the same idea behind stellar parallax. So when I shift from one eye to the other, my thumb appears to move, yeah? Uh, obviously, it's not really moving, it's because it's moving relative to the, to the background over here, the way I can see it. Using the same principle, we can talk about how stars appear to move from the Earth. And this is going to be um, the foundations of stellar parallax. So the first thing I'm going to do is the following. So first of all, let's just draw uh, our thumb. So our thumb was over here, yes, over here. And I had, um, uh, there we go, my eye, my left eye was over there. This is my left eye and my right eye was over here. So this is my left eye, this is my right eye. Then, um, yeah, let's label this as T for my thumb, okay? Initially, when I look at the my thumb through my left eye, my thumb appears to be over here, yeah? I'll put it as a dashed, dash, 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 dash line over there. The dashed line represents my thumb. There we go. And then from the right eye, my thumb appears to move over here to this position. There we go. There we go. So T in both of them. Right. So if I was to just draw a line over here, this line going from there all the way to there. Yes. And then we also draw a line, you know, from the there to there over here. Yes. This simple idea that if I was to look at the my thumb from different sides, it appears to move relative to the background. Right, now let's try and tie this same idea into um, stellar parallax. So let's draw um, the sun over here. This is the sun over here, this is the sun. And then we're gonna have the earth. The earth is going to be um, over here at the start. So this is going to be in, this is the earth in December. Yes, this is the earth in December. So this is the earth in December, right. And after six months, it will become uh, June. So there we go. So the Earth will make its rotation around the sun. There we go. It's going to make a rotation around the sun. And what will happen is, uh, this is six months later, so this is going to be in June over here. Right, so that's going to be uh, the Earth going around the sun. Let's draw um, a star, which is directly above the sun. So let's draw a star directly above the sun over here. There we go. That's the star. Right, so if I was to view that star in December, it would appear let's say, to be roughly over here. That's where the star will appear to be, okay? And then obviously from six months later, if I was to view it from the Earth, we will notice that it will move roughly to, let's say, over here. Look, over there. Right, so hopefully you can see that this is very similar to what we had in terms of um, the, uh, the my thumb moving, yes, relative to the background. This actual principle is called stellar parallax. We're going to see how the star shifts position, how the star shifts position over here. And then from here, we're going to talk about this distance over here. We're going to talk about this distance between the sun and the star that we can see. And we're going to talk about this angle as well. So we're going to drop the line over here. and We're going to talk about this angle, this angle for uh, which the star appears to move. Right now, from here, we're going to look at this diagram in more detail. OK, right. So here is the diagram that we had from before. Now, let's talk about a couple of things. So we're going to try and talk about this angle, which it's moving, it's going to be appear to moving from. Yes, from the central point over here outwards. We're going to talk about this angle. Right, so um, another bit of data I'm going to give you is this distance between uh, the sun and the earth. This is known as one astronomical unit, one AU. One AU, one astronomical unit, is going to be equal to 1.5 times by 10 to the 11 meters. Okay, that's going to be important in a minute. Right, so this angle here is going to be the same as uh, this angle over here. Yes, these two angles are the same, and therefore these angles are also the same over here. So all of these are the same. So all of these angles are the same. Now, we're going to talk about this triangle over here. We're going to talk about this triangle over here. Um, we're going to look at the distance between the star and the sun. Yes, the star and the sun over here. So hopefully you can just see that triangle that we can see that this is going to be, and we know this is going to be theta over here. Yes, this theta right now. Uh, we can say that, um, t uh, let's call this bit D over here. This is the distance between the star and the sun. We can say that tan of the angle theta 
yes, tan of the angle theta is equal to opposite, yes, opposite over uh, adjacent, yes, opposite, opposite over adjacent over here. So therefore, it's equal to 1 AU divided by D, yes, 1 AU divided by D. Now, from here, let's talk about um, the value of theta, right? At large uh, astronomical distances, we know that the value of theta, you know, like one degree, imagine I had a protractor and I have one degree, if I was to draw that, imagine like one degree in a protractor, yeah, it's really small, it's really small. But if I was to extend that at very large distances, what happens is that that one degree that you're so used to, actually, it's it's actually quite wide at very large distances. Imagine I draw one degree, we drew it uh, a long distance away, one degree is actually, you know, far too large. We're going to split one degree into 60 components. So inside of every single degree, yeah, every single degree in a protractor, we're going to call it split into 60 components and it's going to be called an arc minute. So inside here, there's actually going to be uh, 60 arc minutes. Arc minutes. So there you go. Uh, sometimes you might see it as 60 dash, yes? So within every single degree, there are 60 arc minutes. Right, so imagine we split up one degree, we've got 60 different segments. But even at very large distances, arc minutes are not enough. We're going to split every single arc minute into another 60 um, components. So within every single uh, arc minute, there's going to be an arc second. Yes, these are just alternative um, measurements for an angle. Yes, they're nothing to do with time, nothing to do with time over here. So within here, there's going to be Three, uh, it's going to be 3,600 um, arc seconds, arc seconds. Yes, so don't forget in one degree there are 60 arc minutes and within every arc minute there are 60 arc seconds. Therefore, in one degree there are 3,600 arc seconds. Uh, and then you can see it over here, 3,600 arc seconds, there we go. So that is the symbol, double dash means arc seconds. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Right, you might be thinking, why on earth am I teaching you about arc seconds? It's because this, when this angle is actually equal to one arc second, this distance will mean something. So once again, when this angle, the, the parallax angle is equal to uh, one arc second, yes, this distance will represent something. So what is one arc second? Let's put this down over here. So if I have one arc second, the question is going to be the following. How much of a degree is it? Well, look, if you know that in one degree, there's 3,600 arc seconds, therefore one arc second will be one over 3,600 degrees. That's going to be um, what one arc second is going to be uh, worth. One over 3,600 degrees. Right, so now we can now plug this into here. This distance now, so the distance when at the angle of theta is one arc second, yes? Let's plug, plug it in. So therefore D over here is equal to one AU divided by tan of the angle theta, okay? Now, over here, that's one AU was 1.5 times by 10 to the power of 11 meters divided by tan theta. Uh, it's going to be tan open bracket don't forget, theta was one arc second. So this is when it's going to be one arc second. This is one arc second, one arc second over here. When it's one arc second, we know that it's going to be one over three, six, zero, zero degrees. Okay, so therefore, what's the distance going to be? Let's plug it in. 1.5 times 10 to the 11 divided by tan, open bracket, one over three, six, zero, zero close bracket, there we go. The answer going to be, D is actually going to be equal to 3.09 times by 10 to the power of 16 meters. Right, so that distance, how far away that star is from the sun, that will be equal to 3.09 times by 10 to the power of 16 meters over here. Excellent stuff. Right, you might be thinking, why on earth am I talking about this? Well, this is actually equal to the unit of the parsec. This is actually equal to one parsec. So 3.09 times by 10 to the power of 16 is equal to one parsec PC. And that is going to be a unit of measurement of distance when you're talking about um, things in space. Yes, so obviously for very large distances, we can talk about parsec. So one parsec is going to be equal to 3.09 times by 10 to the power of 16 meters over here. Hopefully that all makes sense to you and hopefully you're able to uh, take the diagram 
uh, of stellar parallax and recognize that you can actually derive what the parsec is. Yes, it is going to be uh, the distance a star is above the Earth. Yes, if uh, the parallax angle is one arc second. Yes, and which is going to be 3.09 times by 10 to the 16 meters. Excellent stuff. And that's it for another session of Surrounds with Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to get my channel going. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye. And check out my content, guys. I've got tons and tons of videos to help you with studies. Cheerio.